Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. How's it going? And today we're talking about volume 9 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Since we recorded volume or volume 8 discussion, I've watched the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie as well as Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1. Dang! So finally I've seen all of the <laughs> all of the anime adaptation. Yay! Uh, and I, I decided to watch it not in the order of release but in order of well, cr- chronological order, uh, which made sense to me. Uh, and and it was a, such a great adaptation, bo- both the movie and the season. Uh, amazing stuff. Yay! So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is amazing. Uh, and last time, James and I were a little curious about... or we, 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 we didn't quite remember exactly how many fingers of Tsukuna that Yuji had consumed so far into the story. Um, mm. And so I decided to count them as I watched the season, uh, season one, uh, since mm-hmm. that was roughly, well, we're, we're only a little bit past that. And, it, well, and there definitely hasn't been much, there, there's been most, mostly flashbacks anyway, so it hasn't really counted. So basically, season one is accurate, and I got it to four fingers. Yeah. So it's good to know, and I'm definitely going to try to keep track of that from now on, how many he, he does, or yeah, how many he has consumed, consumed. so four out of 20 so far. Hmm, hmm. Uh, let's talk about Satoru Gojo, first of all. We got a little bit more insight into his six eyes, kind of learning that he can sense the presence of beings regardless of whether or not they have any cursed energy, mm. which was just like one, I, I, I assume one part of the six eyes, or or at least of his abilities in total, because he, he seems to have so many kind of <laughs> perks and 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 strengths. But yeah, it was interesting, though it didn't really prove too useful, kind of, in this fight with Tochi. But still, I don't know. It, it was an interesting one. Yeah. It was, very, it was very interesting to see Gojo struggle. Well, he, he reversed it. He was like, yeah, oh, no, I'm good. You know, I got stabbed, but it's fine. Because that's yeah, where that's right. the cliff, cliff, cliffhanger was. Yeah. But then he ended up getting whooped. But then he came back. And he's like, I, lo- I figured it out because I'm amazing. And he goes on this whole tirade of how his powers works and everything. And uh-huh. uh, I mean, man, it, it was it was a lot in terms of understanding, you know, the reversed d- reversal, the <laughs> negative, positive, like wrapping yeah. my mind around all that. Right. Um, now, it, it, it was funny how he learned reverse curse technique because he had to basically yeah that that that's just how great gojo is <laughs> he had to learn it in order to survive so he learned it of course he did it's gojo so uh, i mean sometimes the the best place to learn something is in the now versus mm. preparing i know i know that kind of goes against everything you know prepare for success and, and all that stuff <laughs> and obviously there's truth to that but also something there's something about on the job training or you know mm. being in the moment and learning from experience uh yeah so true I true i don't i don't think it's too far-fetched in that sense yeah no exactly and like put, pushing yourself to the limit which kind of yeah in some cases can f- almost force some kind of improvement which it did here yeah it, it definitely it's not super strange but it's it's cool to see gojo and the kind of how kind of his god complex kind of seemed even more apparent than ever during that rematch with Toji. Right, uh, right. He was like, throughout heaven and earth, I alone am the honored one. <laughs> like, come on, Yikes, Gojo, man. damn. Yikes, <laughs> He was on a power high. Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> you know, by the end of this flashback chapter, I almost got the feeling that Either there was a sudden change in him, or there was no change. Like, or I say sudden, I mean subtle. Mm-hmm. Um, but it would have been sudden anyway. So it's it's like, how is he different from when he was back when the this flashback started till the present day? It doesn't seem like, aside from being older, or like you know, just a few years older, and and. Uh, more experienced has he has his philosophies changed does he still think he's just better than everybody else oh. i mean 
I mean, I, I, he's still cocky, and he knows that. I, I mean, he knows that he's better. <laughs> he's the best sorcerer there is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Although he has acknowledged that the future generation may will surpass him, or at least come close. Mm. I don't know. It, it, like we get such a change in comparison here. We get such a change in Ghetto and his whole philosophy. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, uh, but was there such a philosophy change in Gojo? I mean, obviously, he was appalled by what Ghetto had become. Yeah. Had, had that always been in him? Maybe. I don't know. Well, because before he said, I don't like the weak, or, or, you know, that was in the previous chapter or volume, right? Yes. So why wouldn't he be, I, why is he all of a sudden this champion of the weak, in a way? I, hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, maybe there's something there that happened, or maybe I'm just overthinking it, which is obviously vi- very viable well, but it's like hmm. why why is he all of a sudden so vehemently against what ghetto i mean obviously get those killing people uh, right <laughs> so yeah so I, guess I think it makes sense with that but with what he said because I, I can't remember exactly but it was so, it was something along the lines of what you said like in the previous volume in the flashback gojo did say something like Mm-hmm. Not caring about the weak or why, yeah, kind of questioning why they should care. However, what we learn in this volume, Gojo and Geto both had agreed ahead of the mission uh, to call off the Tengen uh, merger if, True. if the Star Plasma vessel wouldn't want to agree to it. And that supposedly all happened before the whole, you know, adventure in the flashback began, kind of. So... Even back then, he still wanted to give okay, well, and, and like to to pr- protect her because that's also something they they supposedly agreed on was to protect her future, uh, if she chose to not merge with Tengen. True. So he's hard to read, I think, in that regard. Um, yeah. I th- I maybe he didn't really mean mean it when he when he questioned mm. why they should protect the weak. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I no, I could see that. Yeah. Maybe he was just kind of saying it to to mess around or like kind of to be annoying, which mm-hmm. he definitely can be sometimes. <laughs> he I think he enjoys annoying people or or kind of <laughs> si- or confusing people or rubbing people the wrong way and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I can see that. To uh, Goto's credit as a character, I I really like this idea of taking someone who's just naturally gifted, incredibly OP, is the strongest sorcerer, as multiple people say, mm. but is not boring. I, I, I mean, look, I, I, I get like some people can find him boring, but to me, he, I think his personality is just exudes so much confidence, mm-hmm. and, but also is likable that he, it makes it different than, say, let's, let's take One Punch Man, which ah. Saitama has his own uh, charm aspect and co- comedy going on for him. But he's, you know, he's OP. Like, that's his whole thing. Mm-hmm. Same with Goku and things like that. Granted, those, those characters, or like characters like Goku, overcome this, the thing that's stronger and eventually become stronger. Yeah. Whereas Gojo is, is just, I mean, at least that, as of now, he's the strongest thing alive. So yeah. I, I like this take on that, that trope. And I think, uh, yeah, Gojo is still one of my favorite characters because of that. Yeah, for sure. And as we kind of mentioned, I believe, a little bit in some some earlier volume discussions, he doesn't always succeed in doing what he sets out to do, necessarily. You know, like, he failed to kill Geto, uh, evidently, back in Zero, Mm -hmm. at the end of that. He failed to kill Jogo, and most recently he failed to kill Hanami. So there's, like, multiple people that he has fought with the intention of killing, yet they're still alive. <laughs> Which I think is an interesting thing. Like, yeah, he, he is not, like, completely a god, even though he himself thinks of himself that way. Yeah, yeah. Just going back to that, to that volume where Gojo is saying that stuff about weak, uh, it's such a pain looking out for the weak. He says, mm. being righteous, I hate that stuff. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's such a... It, it is such a teenager lack of re- or responsibility everything's a pain in the butt type of situation but i think what's uh what i'm just gonna at least put my final say 
on on this part. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to keep going. Okay. But I think that because we've had time pass, even since Rico's death, who who's to say that he just hasn't matured, even even within that year's time and the experience that he's had, that yeah, he realizes that. Uh, cliche but with great power comes great responsibility mm-hmm. and maybe maybe he's had that change of mind just i guess it would have been nice to yeah. see but whatever yeah and and, and plus as we kind of learn through ghetto's narration i believe it had been a pretty hectic year yeah uh they had gone, been going through a lot and so uh, yeah it makes sense for for a person to grow a lot during that kind of uh, during a time like that so i can definitely see that yeah I thought it was really kind of bittersweet to see just how strong of a bond Ghetto and, and, and Gojo had, considering what we had in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero with them at that point facing off as, as enemies properly. Mm. Uh, yet they still have this friendship, which is so clearly established in these flashbacks here. Uh, so I think, like, Rereading or rewatching Zero after having, well, after knowing all of this, you I think you really understand their bond much better, and it, yeah, it becomes this mm. bittersweet feeling because it's yeah, it's so tragic and and complicated kind of. It's differently, and it kind of made makes me think that, I, on some level, maybe unintentionally, subconsciously. Gojo was holding back when he dealt the killing blow to Geto and thus not actually killing him. But I mean, it's hard to say for sure. I I mean, who knows? The man's walking with a giant scar on his head. Like, something something <laughs> happened to him. I mean, for sure. He, he was attacked and all. But... I don't know. Just Gojo's like, what do I got to do? Decapitate the man? I mean, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, but you would think like cutting off the cranium, but although I guess you don't know, it, it, it could just be the the forehead that was scratched for all we know. I guess. Right, right. <laughs> but um, but it, it, I think it will be really interesting to see Gojo's reaction further down the line in the story when he finds out that Geto is alive. Yeah, I think that'll be. Well, it'll probably make for for a pretty strong moment since he's under the assumption that he's dead right now. Yeah. Man, that could be pretty rough, maybe. Yeah, it'd be a good moment. Mm. Next up, let's talk about Suguru Geto. Okay. And man, what an arc he went through. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Pretty sad to see really just this descent into darkness. Not unexpected for sure. Like I think we we definitely kind of saw it coming. Oh yeah. But it was definitely sad to see it. Or some of us were, you know, thinking, "Oh, he must be still, he must be evil already," or something. Oh yeah, we did. We so did I, mention I, the possibility. That, that was that. me. I think I <laughs> I was I couldn't trust him, but you know, I I I do generally think that his his heart was in a good place. Um, uh, right. To start off with, mm. and I think just. The disgusting things of the world got to him. Precisely. Really. Yeah. And yeah, because as we were talking about um, how he and Gojo, for example, this whole thing, how they decided to treat Rico ahead of time, you know, mm-hmm. and how he gave her that option to, to do what she wanted to do. Like, we had all these really nice things at the start of the flashback with that and, and yeah, and with just seeing how strong of a friendship Geto and Gojo had. So there's a lot of really nice, or there were a lot of really nice things, but then by the end, obviously, he abandons his best friend and Jujutsu High, and yeah, it turns into a straight up villain. And I can kind of, I can, I, I don't want to say I can buy it totally. Cause, I mean, he he definitely goes overboard and is unacceptable on every level, everything that he does. But like, a lot of shitty things were just kind of piling up for him, just like kind of one after the other. He had like the, mm. the the failure to save Rico for one. There was a lot of stress during that following year, uh, and on top of that, he had to like consume a lot of those gross, gross curses. And I I I kind of liked the the description of that. How it tasted like swallowing a a rag that had been used to wipe a vomit, or something mm. like that. Mm. And like like just the thought of that is ugh. 
So like one after the other of those for a long time. Uh, plus, I guess on top of all that, feeling inferior to Gojo, I think, was also something that was weighing him down. Yeah. And who knows what else there could have been. So, yeah, I, I still get how he kind of fell down into that darkness, but it, uh, yeah, it's rough. I think when I first read it, I thought, oh, that seems a little fast for him to suddenly turn evil. <laughs> hmm. But I think the second read through... I understood that there was, you know, time had passed in between Rico's death and his eventual conclusion. Right. Just that that thing had been weighing on his mind. And and I think for the intents and purposes of the story, it wasn't necessary for us to drag that flashback so that we could see everything that was happening to him per se. Although I wouldn't necessarily mind that, but I, I'm okay with the kind of the faster pace through that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that he's a very caring person, has a lot of compassion for people. And because he's, I mean, and, and you can see that when Rico gets shot or when someone got hurt, he, he, he was pretty quick to make sure that they were okay. And, you know, think, um, he got really upset, very quick to anger in that, in that, in that sense. For mm -hmm. example, when Rico died, he just went out guns blazing. I mean, understandable but it it seemed so not like unlike him i guess i should say but mm -mm. He, he's usually so it seems to be a pretty calm guy but then when it came to when someone gets hurt he just loses it right i think he is a really sensitive person at the core yeah 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 and he, i think that's a big reason why he went ballistic on that on that village mm. um that was kind of the camel that or the camel. <laughs> the straw that put the camel back. Ah, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah so uh, it, it's a shame that such a caring and a sensitive person uh, ended up making this decision. Yeah. But, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, but I think he has really become a really compelling villain, uh, like, through this volume, in my opinion. Uh, like, he wasn't bad before, but, like, right. now knowing all of this, he's become so much more interesting and, and much deeper. He was mysterious before, and uh, and it helped. It, with Zero, it helped. Like, from, if you had yeah, just read... for sure. Just read the, you know, the first few volumes without reading Zero, I think you kind of would have been lost on Ghetto, aside mm. from a couple of things that he's done. Yeah. So I sure. think that this... Uh, flashback gives you some sustenance on who he is as a person and you understand why he is the the way he is so mm -hmm. yeah i uh i think yeah it was good i'm glad we got that i think at the end of the day the the flashback was to establish uh both gojo and geto's character and the relationship right and in that, well, speaking a little bit of, of Zero, in that town that you mentioned, basically the first, the first town that fell to, to Ghetto, uh, he found these two girls who joined him and who fought for him in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Right. Uh, so that was, that was interesting to kind of get the origin of their characters, yeah. which I hadn't really expected. <laughs> uh, no. They, they no. definitely were... Pretty ma minor. I mean, I expected them to return in some, some aspect. I felt like. Uh, fair, yeah, but, in some aspect. Because they're not dead. Uh, no, as far or, as we actually, know. I don't remember how it ended for, ended for them at, by the end of Zero. Right now, I can't re recall. Um, I could, I could have sworn they escaped, but maybe, maybe I, I'm wrong. Maybe they did. Either way. <laughs> um. So I guess would be nice to see more of them. Uh. I, I mean, actually, yeah. I I don't think they died. Uh, that would have been that would have been strange if he would kind of reintroduce them through the flashback like this if they weren't supposed to come back into the story properly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I expect they will come into the main story again um, in present day. But yeah, that was nice. But what was not nice afterwards? Well, I mean, obviously killing the village is terrible. But then he mm. goes and kills his parents. What yeah. the heck? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it goes to his mindset where. I have to go all in on this right. or I won't even be able to compare compare to you, Gojo, or whatever. Yeah, right. 
And since his goal at the end of the day is to extinguish the possibility of curses being born at all, then yeah, he can't make any exceptions. He, yeah, he has to kill all non-sorcerers because if even one exists, then that person can generate new curses. So, well, okay. I get what you're saying. Mm. But is that just an excuse for him to just kill all the non Jujutsu sorcerers? Because, I mean, they, obviously they were talking, and I think uh, this new character that we'll talk about later, I, I, mm. I think she obviously considered that, and, and uh, that, that was the point of her discussion. But for him, for Geto, it almost seems like an excuse for him to fall down that hole of killing all the monkeys, you know? Yeah. It, and, and maybe it did start off like that when he snapped. Yeah. But I, I think that that purpose is long gone. I, I think it's, it's changed from, if it ever was, it, it's changed from doing this to get rid of curses to creating a paradise for just curse users. I think it is all of the above. <laughs> Uh, 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 like <laughs> the whole time. I mean, it does fulfill that requirement. Yeah. yeah. Right. But because I think, like, cause especially during that last year or so of him being at Jujutsu High, which was just so intense and everything, how he, well, he had to keep eating all these curses because non sorcerers kept making new curses. And if a world would be created where, yeah, where there aren't any non sorcerers who can create new curses, then he. He wouldn't have to do that job or he, yeah, or anything like that. So I think it is for himself in that way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I, yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's a lot of things. I think, it, I think there's a, a degree of power hunger as well behind his actions. True. To some extent. Yeah. But I think, I think really he has a lot of reasons to do it. Not that that makes it good, but he has a lot of reasons, <laughs> kind of his own reasons, I, I think. Though this definitely can can be debated. <laughs> Fair. My last little thing on Ghetto is uh, just wanted to say how much I loved seeing his fight with with Toji, uh, and just how he used the curses that he can man- manipulate in that fight with Toji. Sure, he kind of failed at it, like he 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 kind of kind of lo- lost pretty big. But I still thought it was cool to see how he used like the dragon and uh, that that woman kind of mummy spirit. Yeah, this um, the scissors yeah. lady, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's something I I look forward to seeing him more in action in the future, and using his uh, cursed spirits or or curses. It was great seeing him in action in Zero. That was that was pretty cool. Uh, that was cool too. That was definitely cool too. I guess my last thing is that he takes over the time vessel palace, or the you know the, the organization. Mm. Right. So is that still active and running after zero? Because we I don't I, we haven't really seen him with anybody else besides the the curses, right? Mm. So are they still around? Are they still waiting for him? Are the twins there? Do they know that he's still alive? I don't know. Questions. Hmm. Questions. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe they do. Maybe they're all aware. Maybe they all have this Shibuya date <laughs> checked on their cal- calendar. <laughs> they, oh, right. Class reunion or. or <laughs> but yeah, I I'm not entirely sure. Right. No, but that that's a good question. Geto is still mysterious, even though we did get this backstory stuff. Uh, true. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I definitely appreciate. Yeah. Absolutely. Some some stuff still being left out. Mm. Yep. Very well. Shall we talk about Toji Fushiguro next? Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, this this guy, thanks to the fact that he has zero cursed energy, like apparently literally none, which is unheard of. Mm-hmm. Besides in him, thanks to that he can, and, and and yeah, and like the way he uses that hidden inventory of his, he can very easily hide from most sorcerers. And I mean, and even from Gojo when he was worn down as he was. Right, right. So that's interesting. Man, Akutami just keeps delivering like all these fascinating kind of gimmicks in the world that make sense with the established things and everything. Like, I, I, I really like it. It's very creative. 
though we have we have praised Akutami enough maybe <laughs> about that but i, <laughs> I mean I just, i'll pray i'll praise him again i, I just I'll praise keep, him again for uh, that. Sure. keep being impressed <laughs> yes so fushiguro uh is very interesting yeah i have to compare him to maki in that they're both zenin mm. and they both lack the curse energy true though she well he 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 lacks it completely she she also lacks it completely not com- not completely i think everyone has some cursed energy right everyone generates cursed energy so even in this volume you see maki so they mention um i think it was oh, who was it the the new character she mentions i'll just say her name yeah. if i can find it yuki yuki yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she mentions that Fushiguro has never been seen. He's kind of an experiment in a way. Um, he has zero curse energy. And in on that page where they talk about that, you see a panel of young Maki. True. So I'm pretty sure they're implying that while Fushiguro uh, well, is gone, but he was the only one, there is another kind of a thing. And I think it's this heavenly restriction that they mention in this in this volume that's what that's what fushiguro's thing is this heavenly restriction of his of the curse energy power and i think that's what maki has as well hmm that would make sense and yeah and that yeah then they would be yeah the exact same more or less when it comes to their abilities and everything now the one the one thing that i'm a little confused on is why fushiguro can see the spirits i mean he's using all it's applied that he's using all five of his senses his the senses have been heightened, so he's able to mm-hmm. see them, I guess, in that way. Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't uh, Maki be as well? But it could be that she just hasn't had the time to heighten her senses enough to be able to do that. Maybe if that's a thing that could come in the future. Mm. Um, not sure, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive that they are both experiencing the the zero curse energy for whatever reason right no i i think yeah that's a good point i somehow kind of missed or i i definitely I, I knew that was maki but i was um i didn't put together that it was really the exact same gimmick happening here but uh, yeah i believe it is fascinating i just i guess i was confused as to why why yuki wouldn't have found out about maki because she said that she hadn't found anyone other than uh, Toji, who had this. But I feel like she would have been able to find out about Maki, right? Since she comes from such a famous family. I don't know. I mean, the the Zenin family didn't acknowledge Maki or her twin, right? Mm. I mean, yeah, they, they did kind of use them as servants in a way. And in that kind of... Yeah, I guess it could be right. that they, since they weren't kind of elevated in the family then, yeah. I mean, Maki can't even can't even see the curses yeah so maybe that's maybe they don't realize that that's the case true true could be that as well i I don't know (laughs) maybe maybe i am wrong maybe you're right but no but i mean no i i I, i'm i'm quite convinced it would be strange if they placed that panel there like that if it wasn't for that reason i suppose plus i mean because i i i can't remember quite uh how her curse energy thing was described in the past but but yeah, you, you, you probably are right in that it's literally zero, just like Toji's. Um, I just, for some reason, misremembered it, probably. So maybe you're, maybe, and this is actually a point I did want to get to, but huh? since we are talking about it now, I'm just going to bring it up. Yep, yep. Maybe you're, you're thinking about Yuji where, oh, well, maybe you're not, but <laughs> I'll just throw this out anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Yuji doesn't have any curse energy until he eats Sukuna's finger. Then he is able to use that, manipulate that in some way. There's also uh, Maki's twin sister. She she had a thing where she can't. What was it? She can't produce curse energy, but she can use it. I can't. I can't remember what it was. Mm. She was. She was different. She. She. Yeah. She also has one thing. But man, all, all, like, a lot of this though, like, cause yeah, I don't think you're wrong in saying these things, but. It kind of, I feel like it kind of goes against what was established very clearly in this volume and how all, I guess it's just, uh, all, all non-sorcerers generate curse energy. 
just by kind of existing and because they can't control it. But Jujutsu Sorcerers and Cursed Users, they learn how to, how to control it, and that's why they don't leak out all of that curse energy, right? Curse, so, so that curse energy is different than curses, I believe. So Q, not, non-sorcerer, they're always like, curses are always coming from them. The sorcerers, they are able to control that the, the curses are not coming out of them. Yeah, does that make curses and not curse that, energy? Mm, that I think that's the difference. If that, l- let me just re- maybe recheck real quick. But reread yeah, it. I, I think <laughs> I, I hope you're right about this because <laughs> because um, that would explain it. Uh, it says the amount of no. Well, it says the amount of cursed energy that leaks from sorcerers compared to from non sorcerers is extremely low. Mm. Mm. So with that, I feel like all humans in general should have cursed energy. It's just that. In different levels, they, they're able to control it or use it or, or stuff like that. Either not at all or very efficiently. But, but, but... I'm a bit confused, I think. <laughs> M- Maki doesn't have curse energy. Uh, like they, they've said that. Cool. I, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on that. Because uh, I, know, I know you know Maki. <laughs> they said it, though. But then, like, in Yuji's case... Yuji didn't have curse energy either because uh, Fushiguro, um, Megumi, did never... Fushiguro never noticed it, you know? I believe there was a line where he said, oh, wow, I don't, I don't sense any cursed energy from this guy. How is he able to do these crazy physical moves? Um, but then when he gets the finger, or he eats the finger, he's able to have the cursed energy. Man, I feel like this is contradicting what this volume established, though. With all of these characters who have, n- like, never had cursed energy, mm. it feels weird to me. Hmm. So what what part of it feels feels off? Supposedly all humans have cursed energy within them. The non-sorcerers can't control it, and so it leaks out of them constantly, and thus giving birth to curses and stuff. Jujutsu sorcerers learn to control it. It seems to establish that everyone have it, whether or not they leak it or not. But obviously that definitely isn't the case based on well, these uh, Senin characters and maybe uh, Yuji as well. And th- I feel like that's a pretty good amount of characters, so who's to say there isn't like a shitload of more? <laughs> Just exceptions to this rule. I don't know. Am I making sense? I understand where you're getting caught up. And, and I think that it's fair to say that everyone can have um, curse energy. Right. Or every, everyone should have curse energy. Uh, but I think what we have here are cases of people who don't, who just don't, for whatever reason. Mm. I mean, I, I think this, it gets me really excited to see where this is going, and, and there's a reason, potentially, for the way Maki is, and maybe how Yuji was. Right. I don't know. I It kind of gets me excited. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I hope the, the coming books will kind of explore this a little further uh, and make sense of it all. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess I can, I, can, I can accept that they are other exceptions to the rule, along with Toji. Yeah. But I, you're absolutely right that this volume does establish that everyone has the curse energy. That, that was my bad. For, uh, all good, all good. <laughs> yeah, misunderstanding. Yeah, no, but this... No, the, 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 yeah, I think things are falling into place. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, what else on Toji? Well, he supposedly, almost definitely, but not necessarily, killed Misato Kurui. Like, we didn't see her after he mentioned that he probably killed her. Right, right. So there's a chance she's still alive, though I'm not counting on it. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. Maybe it just shows his uh, I, uncaringness. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> How he just... He just doesn't give a crap. Maybe that's why they did it that way. Uh huh. But you're right. It it does seem like maybe she is actually alive. Um, it's possible. <laughs> I just don't know why would you keep her alive. I mean, yeah. are you gonna bring her back in the story for what purpose? Yeah, not likely. She's probably dead. Uh, probably. So in the previous volume discussion, we were like, oh, who's going to die? Yeah. Misato or Fushiguro? I think we both had a side, but in the end, it. It seems like they both both died, which we, exactly. I said, 
I think we both said it was more likely it, to happen. Yeah, I think, well, I think we were both suspecting, like, both of these definitely had a chance of dying. Uh-huh. And then you cited, or and then I think we said, but if only one died, then I think you, you right, cited right. with Misato dying. I cited dying. Misato. Yeah, and I said yeah, that yeah. it would be Toji. Um, and, but yeah, both, both probably died, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yours is more likely. We, I mean, more obvious. Yeah. Very clearly. Um, mm, but yeah, we are, we are, we're we're both winners this time. <laughs> uh, anything else on Toji? I thought it was funny that he randomly remembers his son. Yeah. When he's talking about very very interestingly, he he's talking about people who are blessed and how he beat them all up yeah. and then he's like oh yeah my son i named him bless mm-hmm. there you know <laughs> blessing so, yeah yeah quite ironic mm-hmm. well yeah that's uh all i got on him cool cool next let's talk a little bit about riko amanai obviously her part in this volume was short-lived <laughs> very i like how we were super confident that she would live in some way yeah i mean it just seemed like a safe assumption <laughs> to make <laughs> Uh, Tenken Sama is uh, still alive in the future. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she's got to be okay. Right? Mm, nope. But man, I, I, it was heartbreaking to see how, how she was killed like immediately after declaring like her dreams and her desire yeah. to do more things. And then she just is shot, shot in the head. That was so sad. Uh, pure evil on uh, Akutani's part. Like... <laughs> Just ripping that from us, but mm. yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, one way or another, uh, Tengen was somehow stabilized despite Rico's premature death. Go figure. I wonder how. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't matter. Will we ever see Tengen? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I was really kind of hoping it would happen. <laughs> right, me too. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, well, indeed. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if this had been established previously, hmm? but Tengen had been around since the Nada period uh, when Buddhism was first embraced, right. really. Uh, that was interesting to hear how long he's, or Tengen's been around. For sure, yeah. But yeah, maybe it wasn't much more on Rico? No. Then let's talk next about Yugi Tsukumo, the woman from Toto's backstory. Yeah. So it was really nice to see more of her and how she kind of planted some seeds in Ghetto, whether or not it was intentional. I, mean, if, I don't think it was intentional, but um, who knows, I guess. We, she is quite mysterious still. I agree. And she never heard Ghetto's type, unfortunately. Yeah, that is the main, the, the biggest tragedy of this book. <laughs> It really is, you know, just <laughs> unfortunate. But yeah, she she definitely wants to create this world free from curses to begin with, so that one doesn't have to fight and eliminate curses. Which, yeah, we kind of talked about before for Ghetto. I do believe to to one to 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 an extent he he shares that or he adopted that. But yeah, he has a lot of other reasons in addition to it as to why he does what he does. But but it definitely came from her and. It seems like her most plausible method of going about it is to teach all humans to control their cursed energy, uh, which is a massive project, but a respectable one, I think. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, how, yeah, you'd have to, like, I don't know. Yeah. I wonder what she's doing right now, because yeah. it's implied that she goes uh, to foreign countries a lot. Yeah. Um, I wonder if she's going to other places where there are curse uh, jujitsu uh, users out there. Um, just learning from them, I, I don't know. It's it's interesting. Are, mm. is, there, is, is everyone required just to go up into the mountains and just, you know, t- take a meditation session or something? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you have to start small, kind of teach one group of people, then try to make that spread somehow. It seems like, yeah, it seems like something you can't, change in one generation right really. yeah i agree with you that um it seems more plausible to teach everybody how to control the curse energy right than just to erase it altogether. precisely and she seemed to think so too even though obviously it 
it is also an, an incredible, an incredibly big undertaking. But yes. Anything else on Yuki? Nope. Then let us move into kind of the present day story in this volume at the end there and talk about Kokichi Muta, also known as Mekamaru. He was one of the moles. Yeah. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense, <laughs> I think. Or at least given his motivations for doing what he did. Right. Because we knew he was yeah. willing to do anything to get a normal body. So mm-hmm. kind of with that in mind, I totally see why he did what he did. And they suspect there's at least one other mole, supposedly very high up, like above the mm. principles at Jujutsu High. Yeah. Is what they suspect as well, but we don't know anything more on that. It's Tenken Sama! Oh, no, oh, oh, that would be. No, no. That would be wacky. But actually, Tengen is. Actually, wait, I, I know this was kind of a joke thing, or it seemed that way, but. Uh, you know, Tengen is the one who's supposed to be, like, keep up this barrier. Uh-huh. To protect the school, right? Yet, mm-hmm. Mahito made it in to steal the fingers and the death painting wounds. That is true, but what if he, he was did just seem letting? like he had information? I suppose it could. That oh yeah, right. How, you know how to get past Tengen. True, and, could have been that. Yeah, that's true. But it would <laughs> it still would be an interesting twist, and I guess to play along with this. <laughs> yeah. We don't know who the new vessel be- was. It did seem kind of ominous how they were able to get Tengen a new vessel. Yeah, or however it worked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe it wasn't. There wasn't anything nefarious behind it, but uh, I don't know. Could could be. Could be. Definitely could be. But honestly, we really don't know who the higher ups are anyway. Yeah. Besides Tengen, really. Uh, true. True. But anyway, Kokichi Muta. That's the. The, the real name of Mikamaru. And yeah, I, just, I, I totally get his desperation and, you know, reasons for doing what he did. I, th- I still think he's a good guy. I don't think he's, like, turning evil or anything like that. He was just desperate mm-hmm. to, to get a functional body. And from here on out, I assume he's going to try to, um, you know, maybe, like, prove to the good guys that he's a good guy uh, so that he can hopefully fight alongside his friends again. I mean, he's first got to he's got to beat Mahito and Geto first. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> somehow, yeah, or at least get away from that or something, uh, for sure, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But I'm very excited to see like how this battle is going to play out, and to see because it it looked like Kokichi was kind of about to attack them with like multiple Mekamaru bodies at that last mm-hmm. panel. So that's gonna be pretty pretty dope to see. I think. Yeah, it does kind of have a feeling that he was using them. Um, exactly. In order to get to get his body, and he was just counting on the fact that he could overpower them mm. in the end. Uh, I I think he might be underestimating them, but we'll see. Um, yeah. But I, I, to your to your point, I do think he he's not some nefarious evil guy who wants to destroy the world or anything like that. He, he cares about the people. The the his classmates in Kyoto, he asked them not to make sure they weren't hurt. Mm. I, I, I do think that he, he'll be fine. You know, he's not going to turn evil. Right. Uh, could he become a vigilante of, of sorts? Maybe. Maybe. But I, I don't see him joining their side. Uh, right. No, for sure not. Or unless I'm misreading the situa- the whole situation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, true. Anything can happen. But no, I, I, I agree with you. But yeah, it was uh, just kind of the very end of the volume about that. But that was still very interesting stuff to, to get on him. Yeah. Is there any other character you want to talk about before we get into predictions? Yes. So, hi, Bada. Uh, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that, oh, uh, you know, he was talking to Geto. I was like, oh, this is okay, nice. I'm glad we got more of him because this is kind of what I wanted uh-huh. uh, from the previous volume. I was like, oh, I wonder what happened to him. Yeah. Oh, he did. <laughs> he was a sweet guy. I know. I liked him. And actually, it is after that chapter uh, in the physical books. There is a, a little between chapter page uh, with a little, a little, some information on you, Haibara. Oh, really? Yeah. It says he doesn't come from a family of Jujutsu sorcerers, but he does have a younger sister who can see curses. Hmm. 
he sternly forbid his sister from going to Jujutsu High. He likes rice. He likes people. I like rice. I like people. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about some predictions next. So I guess in the immediate kind of thing that's happening uh, with Kokichi, mm-hmm. I, I think, I, I don't think anyone of the three of them that are in that scene, like Kokichi, Geto, and Mahito, I don't think any of them is going to die here. No way, right? <laughs> right. There's going to be a bit of a fight, but I think Kokichi is going to manage to get away somehow. Yeah, it it would be, it would be a shame if he got this functioning body. Uh huh. And then dead. <laughs> like, that would yeah, that would be so be pointless. <laughs> anticlimactic. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. I guess it would only be good for Mahito and Geto as they got their information through him. Right. And I guess it would just further kind of make us hate them. Uh, True. So I guess it could serve that purpose. But in terms of likeliness, based on the characters that are fighting each other, I mean, mm. to me, I understand Mikimaru or or Kokichi is 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 a capable sorcerer. I just don't think he can hold a candle to Mahito and Geto, especially the both of them. It'll be interesting to see what he can do now that. He he's controlling like a bunch of uh, Mikamaru robots at the same time, because we haven't really seen that before. Mm. See how he how he does, um, and and maybe maybe he have even even more strength now that he's not oh, yeah. controlling yeah so far away. You know he's like oh really that close. too right right maybe there's maybe there's something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean that could be really cool. Yeah, mm. but still I. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to die. I think I do think he'll get away, mm-hmm. but does I don't see him becoming a victor. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, precisely. It, it, yeah, somehow probably going to end with him escaping or somehow getting away. Um, and I think I also think there's a decent chance that Kokichi will have some kind of interaction with Jujutsu High, like or someone from Jujutsu High. Um, oh yeah. I think that there's the decent possibility of that because I think he wants to reconnect with them. Uh, and he wants their forgiveness, you sure. know, I think on some, on some, some level. Or, or, I mean, definitely. And I guess that could be a bit shaky or, yeah, we, we could get some drama from that perhaps. But there's going to be something like that, I believe, as well. But yeah, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see all that. I know that uh, we already mentioned it. But I, I want to get your opinion on it. Hmm? Do you think that if Yuji could potentially have this heavenly restriction thing, uh-huh. Uh, do you think that could explain his superhuman strength? Because that's certainly a puzzling aspect to his origin. Right. I mean, there definitely is a connection there, uh, considering both him and Maki and Toji, all of them are abnormally strong, and and mm-hmm. and all of, like there there is a, a lot of similarities between all of them. So. It definitely could be. I'll be tied to that somehow, but I don't. Know, I don't know how the strength comes into that necessarily. I I think it just seems to be a correlation, to be honest. Definitely. So that's that's my prediction is that he has the strength because of this. So I think he does have zero curse energy. Something happened in his childbirth. Either he's. I'm not gonna go as far as say he's zenin, because that. That kind of seems boring. <laughs> but I think there there must be something with uh, the circumstances of his parents and his birth uh, that had this uh, heavenly restriction on him. Mm. Maybe, so maybe the a side effect of that is physical great physical strength. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, right. that's my prediction. It doesn't make probably doesn't make sense. No, no. I think I mean I think it makes sense. So continue on with Yuji. Well, I, I guess this is not just Yuji, but because he's the main character, I, I wanted to focus on him. Mm-hmm. It, we have some uh, of these students who are who are being nominated for a grade one sorcerer. So, as established in the previous volume, who is going to be the sorcerer, the grade one sorcerer to join each one, or in this case, Yuji, uh, for some missions. Ah, because it can't be Toto or May. Precisely, <laughs> because they were the they were the ones who recommended him. Mm-hmm. So, I was wondering if it could be Utah. Oh, dude, is he a grade one sorcerer? I, th- I don't 
know if we know. I I, I believe oh, okay. in Zero <laughs> he was classified because of him having Rika with him. Uh-huh. He was classified as special grade, but that was I think because oh. of her, not because of his own abilities necessarily. Ah. Um. But I could definitely. Well, I I know that uh, Gojo has referred to Yuta in the main series of Jujutsu Kaisen as one of his best students. So it wouldn't surprise mm. me. Or I mean, I, honestly, I would be surprised if he's anything lower than grade one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so. So that'd be cool. Yeah, dude, I love that. I love that. I really, I'm really hoping for that now. Like the two main characters to be on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see how they interact. I don't. Know, I think that'd be cool. That'd be so cool. Um, yeah. But the, the, there's clearly a lot of options, uh, even for characters sure. who haven't even, who haven't been introduced. But mm. I think Utah would be cool. But Nanami has a special place in my heart. I feel like he's is he a grade? Surely he's a grade one sorcerer, right? Uh, I, yes, he's got to be. So I, I know they've already worked together, so maybe we may be retreading. But I I like Nanami, so let's. Yeah. I don't mind him if he <laughs> if he if he, if he uh, joined you uh, Yuki, but. They're not UG, uh, UG mm. but... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say no to that either. Um, then there's also, because I believe in relatively early in the main series, uh, Gojo, at the same time, kind of, I, I think, when he mentioned Yuta, he also mentioned another student as being one of yeah. like, his best students. I can't oh, remember shoot. the name right yeah. now. Uh, but I can't either. I believe it's I a character that we've never mm-hmm. actually seen in the story so far. You're uh, right. So for that character to be introduced al- along with something like this could be pretty cool. I think you're 100% oh. <laughs> on the spot. I think, I mean, as cool as it would ha- be to have Utah, yeah, uh, or or Nanami, <laughs> I think it just makes too much sense to introduce this new character in that way. Yes, especially since we've never seen him ever. Mm-hmm. Um, though, uh, aside from mm-hmm. his back, I guess. Uh, right. Yeah, like some silhouette or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I would love to see that character somehow it doesn't have to be this way but somehow i'd like to see that character soon yeah uh, but also desperately want yuta back into the story because it's been so long <laughs> so long i mean the jujutsu kaisen zero movie had like a post credit scene where yuta was like having a coffee with one of the bad guys <laughs> that was so strange and then gojo came up to him and said something i can't remember exactly what it was now but mm-hmm. that was such a strange scene and and I don't believe that was in the manga. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I wonder. I get may, maybe the the bad guy. Maybe he turned out it turned out to be a not too bad guy, and he decided to that he was he was on the wrong side. Maybe. Hey, that would be nice. Yeah. I also really want to see more of uh, Yuki Tsukumo at this point because she's only ever appeared in flashbacks. We've never seen her in like the present day story. True. So that's something I'm, I'm really, I really just want to get to know her character more because, she, as we said, she is quite mysterious and, and I think she's a fascinating character that I, yeah, just really want to see more of. So anything else for the prediction part? I guess this is more so of a question than anything. Uh-huh. How long until the Shibuya incident? Because they keep mentioning it. Right, yeah. Well... I think it's maybe like late summer, early fall right now is just kind of my gut oh, okay. feeling. Mm. I could be mm. way off, but I, I think so, right? Because they mentioned, I believe at some point, an event that happened in the early summer or something like that. And that was a while ago. But either way, yeah, I could be way off. But I, I, th- that's my suspicion that maybe it's like September now. Oh, and the Shibuya incident is October thirty first. October. Oh, the, oh, duh. Halloween. Yeah, it's on Halloween. So even if it's August, it's getting pretty close. Precisely, and depending on how quickly they decide to move ahead, of time because it's hard. Like that, that, that's something that I realize right. is very hard to predict. Like how fast time is going to pass in one volume uh, it can vary (laughs) a lot true Uh, so i guess it's possible that we could have it next volume or for it to start next volume but it's absolutely not guaranteed yeah you know i i I just realized when i was uh reading today there are like 200 and something chapters released 
Oh, wow. And we're not even in the hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So technically, we're not even halfway, which is mind-boggling to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's there's crazy. so much of the story we have left. Yes, we will be covering a lot uh, over the summer, though, and over the um, in, in into the early fall here on the podcast. So uh, 226 chapters, exactly. That is <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Good, plenty of content. Great. Yeah, we have a lot of good stuff ahead of us. A lot to cover. Mm -hmm. But yeah, excited to read volume 10. Indeed, yeah. This uh, flashback stuff was really fun. Yeah. As we said, it was was great to see Gojo and Geto uh, become the people they are now Mm. and just kind of get their relationships established. And yeah, I think it left us with plenty to think about and talk about. Absolutely. And still a lot of questions and some uncertainties and stuff but uh, there, there's a lot of ideas in Jujutsu Kaisen that are concepts that are hard to grasp I feel like yeah am I fair in saying that I no, I definitely agree Th- this whole heavenly restriction thing or maybe I maybe I'm misterming it for all I know uh, <laughs> the stuff with explaining your powers to get stronger uh while that's something that is made more clear in the anime, yeah, I, it it took me a long time to figure it out. Right, <laughs> which to some was was really quick though. Like they got it really quick. So I yeah, I, don't know. I feel like it's just very loosely touched on in the manga, um, or like or in the early parts of the manga at least. It I think it has become clear by now in the manga, but it it took a little while. Uh, but it was easier to grasp yeah. that early on in the anime. I I felt like, um, so I agree with that. I I think Akutami is obviously again great at coming up with different gimmicks and powers and stuff and kind of yeah you know it's creative in that way but they're bad at or not bad i shouldn't say but the explanations and some of some of the stuff behind the powers can be a bit messy sometimes i think yeah like gojo stuff like that, uh, right for example that, that's hard for me to grasp too yeah like that as well as what we've spent a lot of time talking about in this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it is a bit messy. I, uh, to us, at least, I guess. If, if anyone, like, has a super simple way of explaining all of this to us that isn't spoilers, of course, then please, <laughs> <laughs> please uh, do that. Feel uh, free. Reach out to us in the YouTube comments or on our Discord server. We have an open Discord server that you can find easily in the description. Very well. Um, I think that's all for this week, though, right? Yeah. All right, then. So if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by rating our show on the podcast platforms and subscribing to our channel Umami Manga on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 10. Bye-bye! See you later! Oh.